Chris here and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm here to share with you our options for October's Queer Book Club pick. So that's right, it is time to pick October's book. Once again, you will have four books to choose from. When this video goes live, you will have through the end of the 21st Eastern Standard Time. So at midnight on September 22nd, I will look to see who's winning the poll and whoever that is will be the book club pick. My Discord is linked in the description below, which will be where we are chatting about whatever book wins. And hopefully you'll come join us and read a book with some fun queer representation that hopefully we all love. So let's dive into our options. First up, we have Paranorthern and the Chaos Bunny Ahop Collapse by Stephanie Cook. This is a middle grade fantasy graphic novel. And it says, a witch named Abby and her three friends, a wolf girl, a ghost, and a pumpkin head, band together to try and save their supernatural town from an invasion of rabid but adorable chaos bunnies in this enchanting middle grade graphic novel for fans of Making Friends, The Okay Witch, and Lumberjanes. It's fall break in the supernatural town of North Haven, and young witch Abby's plans include pitching in at her mom's magical coffee shop, practicing her potion making, and playing board games with her best friends. A pumpkin head, a wolf girl, and a ghost. But when Abby finds her younger sister being picked on by some speed demons, she lets out a burst of magic so strong it opens a portal to a realm of chaos bunnies. And while these bunnies may look cute, they're about to bring the Ahapocalypse and get Abby in a cauldron full of trouble. Unless she figures out a way to reverse the powerful magic she unwittingly released. What's a witch to do? In this deliciously humorous, cozy, and bewitching graphic novel, sometimes the most powerful magic comes from our connections to family and friends. But kicking bunny butt is great too. So that is option number one, Paranorthern and the Chaos Bunny a hop Calypse. Next is Can't Spell Treason Without Tea by Rebecca Thorne. This is the first book in the Tomes and Tea series, and this is a cozy mystery with fantasy and romance elements. All Rania and Kianth want is to open a bookshop that serves tea. Worn wooden floors, plants on every table, firelight drifting between the rafters, all complemented by love and good company. Thing is, Raina works as one of the queen's private guards, and Kianth is the most powerful mage in existence. Leaving their lives isn't so easy, but after an assassin takes Raina hostage, she decides she's thoroughly done risking her life for a self-centered queen. Meanwhile, Kianth has been waiting for a chance to flee responsibility, all the better that her girlfriend is on board. Together, they settle in Tawny, a town that boasts more dragons than people, and open the shop of their dreams. What follows is a cozy tale of mishaps, mysteries, and a murderous queen throwing the realm's biggest temper tantrum. In a story brimming with hurt and comfort and quiet fireside conversations, these two women will discover just what they mean to each other and the world. Option number two, can't spell treason without tea. Option number three is The Body in the Back Garden by Mark Waddell. This is the first book in the Crescent Cove mystery series, and this is a cozy mystery. In this queer, cozy series debut, Luke Tremblay is about to discover that Crescent Cove has more than its fair share of secrets, and some might be deadlier than others. Crescent Cove, a small hamlet on Vancouver Island, is the last place out-of-work investigative journalist Luke Tremblay ever wanted to see again. He used to spend summers here until his family learned that he was gay and rejected him. Now, following his aunt's sudden death, he's inherited her entire estate, including her seaside cottage and the antique shop she ran for 40 years in Crescent Cove. Luke plans to sell everything and head back to Toronto as soon as he can, but Crescent Cove isn't done with him just yet. When a stranger starts making wild claims about Luke's aunt, Luke sends him packing. The next morning, though, Luke discovers that the stranger has returned and now he's lying dead in the back garden. To make matters worse, the officer leading the investigation is a handsome Mountie with a chip on his shoulder who seems convinced that Luke is the culprit. If he wants to prove his innocence and leave this town once and for all, Luke will have to use all his skills as a journalist to investigate the colorful locals while coming to terms with his own painful past. There are secrets buried in Crescent Cove, and the more Luke digs, the more he fears they might change the town forever. So there you have it. Option number three, the body in the back garden. Option number four, St. Juniper's Folly by Alex Crespo. This is a YA horror fantasy. Cemetery Boys meets the haunting of Bly Manor in this spellbinding debut. Alex Crespo's queer haunted house mystery is equal part spine-tingling thrills, a celebration of found family, and must-read for paranormal romance fans. 
For Jamie, returning to the tiny Vermont town of St. Juniper means returning to a past he spent eight years trying to forget. After shuttling between foster homes, he hopes he can make something out of this fresh start. But every gossip in town already knows his business. And with the reminders of his past everywhere, he seeks out solitude in the nearby woods called St. Juniper's Folly and does not return. For Theo, St. Jupiter means being stuck. He knows there's more out there, but he's scared to go find it. His senior year is going to be like all the rest, dull and claustrophobic. That is until he wanders into the Foley and stumbles on a haunted house with an acerbic yet handsome boy stuck as in physically stuck inside. For Taylor, St. Juniper is a mystery. The surrounding woods speak to her while she tries and fails to practice the magic her dad banned from the house after her mother died. Taylor can't seem to break out of her spiral of grief until a wide-eyed teenager barges into her life rambling on about a haunted house, a trapped boy, and ghosts. He needs a witch. The folly and its ghosts will bring these three teenagers together, but they will each have to face their own internal struggles in order to forge a bond strong enough to escape the folly's shadows. So there you have option number four, St. Juniper's Folly. On my community tab, when this video goes live, there will be a poll. You can vote in the poll until the end of the 21st of September, so midnight on September 22nd, Eastern Standard Time. I will do another video announcing the winner of the poll. So you will all know which book won and which book we will be reading. In the description below is a link to the Discord, which is where we will be chatting about the book as October goes on. Hopefully you will all come join us. It looks like we have some fun choices for October. I tried to keep it to the like fall cozy spooky vibes because I know a lot of people like to read that in the fall. So I tried to tailor that and make the books kind of fit those vibes. Hopefully one of these speaks to you, but if more than one does, then vote whichever one sounds most interesting or whichever one is easiest for you to get your hands on. I am very excited to see what y'all choose and to read one of these books, all of which sound very interesting to me in the month of October. All of my social media is linked in the description below if you'd like to come chat with me. If you've made it this far in the video, leave me rainbow emojis. Like this video and subscribe to my channel and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.